Hello, Endeavor here. In this part of my series, Lies of the Enlightenment, I'm going to be addressing another damaging concept handed down by the Enlightenment. I'll be addressing tabula rasa, which is Latin for the blank slate. It's the idea that man comes into the world with a mind completely free of any ideas and that his understanding of the world is formed through empirical experience. His mind is a blank slate, so to say. No ideas are innate. People only attain what is put into their minds. An Enlightenment thinker who was a major proponent of this theory was, yet again, John Locke. In his essay concerning humane understanding, Locke argued that man was born with no innate principles, that he didn't bring any reason with him into the world at birth. Instead, truths are imprinted on the mind through experience. A baby doesn't know what the color red is at birth. It learns what red is by seeing it and seeing it differentiate itself from other colors. They don't know the taste sweet or the taste salty until they've tasted food and have a conception imprinted on their mind of what sweet food and what salty food tastes like. This was the basis of Locke's empirical worldview. He believed that these empirical experiences which have left their imprints on the mind are what shape the human character. For Locke, this implied the importance of education. If men were born as blank slates, then they could become virtuous men through education. Bad men were the results of having bad ideas imprinted on their minds throughout their lives. Hence, according to Locke, education was essential for the development of successful individuals. Now, to Locke's credit, the basis of his morality was Christianity, and he wrote in the context of 17th century England. For Locke, the ideal education would be one which instilled Christian morality and a sense of duty towards king and country. He certainly wasn't arguing for the liberalism that exists in the 21st century. However, the idea that the human mind enters the world as a blank slate remains a false premise which opens the door to more destructive ideologies. Since the Enlightenment, the idea of the blank slate has been influential on many political movements, most of which have been egalitarian, seeing as this theory suggests that humans are born as equal blank slates with the same potential for understanding. This theory is very influential on egalitarian progressive thought today. The modern progressive conception of humans held in the West today is that they're all born equal and that influences around them form their understanding of the world. Today, the logic of the blank slate is applied in progressive thought to concepts such as gender, ethnicity, intelligence, criminality, and other traits. Progressivism places high emphasis on education. It sees education as a tool to deconstruct supposed societal influences imprinting themselves on the blank slate human mind which result in inequality. This could be things like racism, patriarchy, or heteronormativity. The goal is to remove influences which create inequality and replace them with influences which create a desired equality between social groups. Now, I know that Locke himself was not this egalitarian. He never would have supported 21st century progressivism, and he never intended this concept to be used in this way. But the point of these videos is not to focus on the original ideas of the authors as so much as to undermine the harmful effect that these ideas have on political thought of the present day. So even if Locke wouldn't have supported this, his ideas have been influential on the reigning paradigm today and must be understood as part of the problem. First and foremost, the most fundamental problem with the concept of tabula rasa or the blank slate is that it's simply not true in an abstract sense or in a practical one. I'll start by attacking the philosophical premise that man is born with no innate principles and that his entire understanding of the world comes through his experiences. Are humans just completely blank slates at birth? No, they aren't. They already have some ability to reason as they enter the world. For example, a baby has never been taught that the fastest way to reach a point is a straight line, but as soon as the baby is able to crawl, if you put it in a room and a toy on the floor, the baby will crawl in a straight line to reach that toy. It doesn't need to do experimentation on different routes, it simply knows at birth that the fastest route is a straight line. And that's not only true for humans, it's also true for animals as well. They know too that the fastest route to a destination is in a straight line. Furthermore, if man came into the world as a completely blank slate and could only begin to understand through empiricism, it would be impossible to conceptualize something that has never been experienced. But this too is false. People can conceptualize in their mind a perfect circle even though in the natural world a perfect circle doesn't exist. We can't experience it, yet our minds are still able to conceptualize what a perfect circle is, and we know what is closer to a perfect circle and what isn't. So on a rudimentary level, the concept of the blank slate doesn't hold up. 
but that isn't really what the concept is about. The point is not to say that we can't imagine a perfect circle, so let's look at something more relevant to the world. Locke admits in his essay concerning humane understanding that if there was a single principle that was innate, it would be that a parent has love and care for its child. He does come to the conclusion, however, that this principle is not innate, since there are no innate principles according to the blank slate. However, there is an anthropological argument for why parents caring for their children must be an innate principle. Because if newborns weren't cared for by their parents, humans would not survive as a species. As animals, humans too desire to pass on their genes as a means of perpetuating the species, and parental care is part of their nature as an evolutionary strategy. Likewise, humans will do what it takes to survive. The conditions that they're living in will determine what needs to be done in order to survive. I'm much more inclined to agree with Thomas Hobbes that man in a state of nature is savage and brutal. He would kill for food, land, resources, or whatever it took for him to survive. It doesn't really line up with the liberal conception of man as this blank slate whose values are determined by societal influences. Technological advances make it so that we don't need to kill each other to survive today. However, the brutal nature of man remains as a foundation. We aren't simply these blank slates. Human nature does exist, and it's not liberal. You can't change that through education. Also, the idea that humans are born as blank slates suggests that they're all born the same. It suggests equality. Now, I know I'll get comments saying that John Locke didn't believe this, but this is what the concept of the blank slate is used for today. The belief that humans are all blank slates and interchangeable, and that their character is formed by the society around them, is foundational to progressivism in the present day. However, hierarchy seems to be the natural state of human societies. All civilizations which have survived for any extended period of time and have resembled functionality have been hierarchical to some extent. They all have had a minority of the population with disproportionate power who impose their authority upon the rest. Even under ideologies such as communism and anarchism, which have the sole purpose of abolishing hierarchies, natural hierarchies have emerged. There are naturally leaders and naturally followers. Progressives will claim that this is the result of some kind of structural inequality. But there's plenty of evidence to suggest that a large percentage of people's behavior, intelligence, and personality is heritable. Some will disagree to what extent, but this means that people are born with some predetermined traits which will inevitably cause inequality, regardless of the education they're given. So they're also not blank slates in the sense that some people will naturally be more successful due to heredity. Now, what really nails progressivism is the fact that these traits are not evenly distributed among social groups. Gender, for example, everyone in their right mind knows that there's psychological differences between men and women, just like there's obviously physiological differences. Men are just naturally more aggressive, while women are just naturally more caring. Men naturally gravitate towards the dominant role, while women naturally gravitate towards passive roles. And there are evolutionary explanations for that. They've been selected for. So the idea that gender roles are determined by social conditions and not innate is nonsense. Now, what's even more blasphemous to progressivism is that there's plenty of evidence to suggest that heritable behavior, intelligence, and personality traits are not evenly distributed between racial groups. The most prominent example of this is that it causes a disparity in the average IQ numbers of different races. Now, there's many who are far more versed on race realism than me, so for more information, I'll direct you to Dr. Edward Dutton, Alternative Hypothesis, or Sean Lass. The point I want to make here is that the notion that humans enter the world as blank slates is clearly false. All the evidence suggests that. But this is the false foundation of the liberal progressive consensus that we're living under today. It views all people as interchangeable blank slates and that the cause of inequality between races or genders is the result of racist and sexist social constructs. It seeks to remove these supposed social constructs in order to achieve equality between social groups. According to progressivism, if they can't create equality, then they just haven't gone far enough, meaning they need more deconstruction and more diversity training. But it's all in vain because humans are not these interchangeable blank slates. Not only are there innate principles which are natural to humans which cause human society to be structured in a certain way, they also have innate traits which result in differing outcomes among people. It's not only determined by the empirical experiences of humans. Even Steven Pinker, a staunch defender of the Enlightenment, wrote a book titled The Blank Slate, in which he argued that tabula rasa was not true from an evolutionary psychological standpoint. 
He pointed out that there are universal principles that people hold, and he even admitted that behavior, intelligence, and personality traits are to a degree heritable. He even admits the dangers of creating an oppression narrative based on the blank slate, but he's too cowardly to apply that to the last 50 years of progressive politics, of course. So let's put aside the progressive orthodoxy. We've dealt with the radical intersectional progressives who believe that all human categories are just social constructs. Clearly this is false. But what about the more moderate progressives, or the classic liberals? The ones that acknowledge innate human nature to some extent. If tabula rasa is false, can liberalism still function as an ideology? What should the response to the blank slate egalitarianism of the intersectional left be? I've actually gotten messages from more moderate progressives or classic liberals in the past where they accuse me of strawmanning them. They say that no one actually believes in the blank slate, but that we should still treat everyone equally. People like Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson have admitted that the blank slate is a false premise, but they remain liberals claiming that right-wing ideas drawn from this reality are dangerous. I'll give Pinker, Harris, or Peterson credit that at least they reject the blank slate as a premise, but here's where they fail. It doesn't matter so much whether or not you believe that the blank slate is true, it's the implications that you draw from whether it's true or not. The problem is that blank slate egalitarianism is foundational to liberalism. The entire liberal multicultural order is set up on the basis that the blank slate is true. Yet these guys are still liberals. They know egalitarianism is false, but they remain egalitarians. If we are all just blank slates and our character is solely shaped by the world around us, then it makes sense to be a progressive. But if not, and we do have an innate, violent nature and heritable traits, progressivism makes no sense. There is no reason to be an egalitarian. Steven Pinker has made the claim in the past that his own ethnic group, which you can read about on his early life section in Wikipedia, is successful because of their particularly high IQs, and that they've suffered persecution because of it throughout history. Yet, if you pushed him on the inequality of achievement between, say, Europeans and Africans, and asked, given that we have substantial evidence that this disparity is due to heritable traits, does egalitarianism really make sense? He'd call you a fascist. Because Steven Pinker, who wrote an entire book on the idea of the blank slate, holds a religious belief in the idea of equality. For someone who has time and time again condemned religious tradition as a source of delusion and proclaimed science and reason as the true source of wisdom, Steven Pinker holds an irrational belief in equality, despite knowing that the evidence is against it. Or maybe he's just subversive. I'll let you decide. Same goes for Harris and Peterson and all these other classical liberals. The classic liberal argument used by Pinker or Harris is that we just need equality of opportunity rather than outcome. Well, if inherited traits are not evenly distributed, certain people will naturally have more opportunity, hence a better outcome. So if there was a completely even playing field with no affirmative action, you'd end up with an America that more resembled the 1940s, maybe with a few more Asians near the top. Not exactly what these liberals envision when they say that. A major misconception about the social movements of the 1960s is that it gave people equality of opportunity. That's not what happened at all. Before the 60s, it wasn't illegal to hire a woman or a black person or even to make them the CEO if you wanted. People were just allowed to hire whoever they wanted. And it was in the 1960s that ushered in measures like affirmative action to bring about equality of outcome, not opportunity. With the justification being that people were all equal and that inequality was caused by discrimination. But Pinker, Harris, or Peterson would never have the balls to question the validity of that. And these policies have failed. Today, 60 years on, inequality still persists. The progressives who believe in the blank slate have an explanation. They say it's because we have institutionalized and internalized oppression. The right-wingers have an explanation. We say it's because of innate human nature. But the classic liberals have no legitimate answer for this. These liberal intellectuals who reject the blank slate claim that we can move beyond our nature. Pinker, for example, suggests that knowing about innate inequality will allow us to craft social policy in order to reduce inequality. He claims that multicultural cosmopolitanism and institutional support can help different groups of people overcome their differences and live together. Mr. Big-Brained Atheist Richard Dawkins, who only cares about the facts, still uses words like racism. Even though ethnocentrism, according to his own work, is just an expression of the selfish gene, meaning the entire concept of racism doesn't even make sense. Yet he still supports liberalism, claiming that we are just rational creatures who can overcome our ethnocentrism. 
And then there's these other intellectual dark web figures like Peterson, Harris, or Eric Weinstein that admit that the blank slate is false, but they're just terrified of the right-wing implications of this conclusion. And to all these intellectuals who hold an irrational, dare I say, religious belief in liberal egalitarianism, despite knowing the facts are against it, my challenge to them is, why? Things like tribalism, hierarchy, and traditional gender roles have been the human norm for all of history up until very recently, and in most places of the world, they're still the norm. In the context of human history, the modern liberal egalitarian system we live under today in the West is radical. It is the exception, and you can only justify it if you believe that man is just a blank slate and that his nature is fundamentally changeable. The entirety of the West's social policy for the last 60 years has been based on the assumption that the blank slate is true. That goes for immigration, multiculturalism, affirmative action, criminal justice, foreign aid, welfare, and more. All of these policies assume equality, but if you know this to be false, then it's completely irrational to support the modern liberal multicultural system. It means that the egalitarian order which we live under today is immoral, unjust, and dangerous. Either you know what you're pushing is destructive, but you have a vested interest in pushing it, or you're just a coward who's too scared to question the intelligentsia. For example, the natural state of man is ethnocentrism. That's the way that human societies have naturally organized themselves since the dawn of time. Multiculturalism is a recent invention of the post-war era, and seeing as it's a young and radical project, and already showing signs of failing, if you believe in an innate human nature, it makes no sense to support it. It makes far more sense to desire homogeneity and self-determination rather than diversity and equality. If you accept that the two genders are fundamentally different, there's no reason to expect or even desire similar outcomes. If gender exists as a means of perpetuating a society, the differences between the two should be seen as healthy, not oppressive. If hierarchy and authoritarianism is just the natural order, it doesn't make sense to have this deep fear of the use of power. Instead, hierarchy should be seen as a necessary part of good leadership. The opposition to these right-wing conclusions from moderate progressives or classic liberals is entirely based on a religious-like belief in equality. But if the blank slate is false and humans are not equal in nature, there's nothing moral about pursuing equality. I want to finish this video by saying this. Here's the biggest problem with the idea of the blank slate, but this also extends to classic liberalism, progressivism, and the Enlightenment as a whole. It's the faith that it puts in human institution. That human institution can and should be used as a tool to craft man into a freer, more equal, more enlightened being. That we just need the right education, rehabilitation, or social structures to overcome the harsh realities of the nature of man. When this fails to achieve its desired outcome, as it always does, the conclusion is drawn that it just wasn't done right. That the oppressive structures are just ingrained in society from top to bottom, and that more re-education, more control, and more social engineering is required. It's a misguided venture because it's based on the false premise that humans don't have an innate nature, and that the inequalities that result from that nature are immoral and illegitimate. Instead, we should seek to understand human nature and create institutions that do not try to change it, but take it into account when structuring an order for us to live under. Man is an imperfect being, and that will never change, because we're not blank slates. And it's through the acknowledgement of man's imperfections, not egalitarian delusions, that a more stable, long-lasting, and fulfilling order can be built. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. If you'd like to support my channel, you can on either Patreon or PayPal. And if you'd like to join my Discord community, you can do that too. All links are down below. Thank you for listening. Till next time, Endeavor.